and I uh, am going to the Kirtan tomorrow. Oh, cool. Uh, cool. I can't I'm wait. It's going to be a it. good one. Yeah, it's just like there's a whole new renaissance going on here in Pittsburgh, I think, you know. I told, uh, oh, yeah. I told Shama Sundar that uh, just like uh, before Lord Chaitanya took sannyas, he used to hang out with all the devotees in Sridhar's house. It's called Sridhar Angam. And uh, he, they, they were kind of like meeting in secret before he actually went out in public. They would lock the doors. And so um, what ha I t that was like the Sridhar Angam. That Angam means house. And then I told the Shamasundar that this is the same thing. This is the Shamasundar Angam, except now we're going to like spread the holy name all throughout Pittsburgh. So right. I, <laughs> yeah, because so, we all had to be holed up in our houses. Yeah, you know, yeah, it's like everything's opening up, you know. Hopefully there's not going to be any more surges. Dr. Fauci said it'll, it shouldn't be too bad, you know, so they might increase a little bit, but nothing like a spike or anything. So can, um, I'm sharing the screen now. You should be able to see it. It's going to pop up here pretty soon. Can you see it? Yeah. Okay. Now you're using your computer? Yeah. Okay, cool. All right, let me read the first, and then we'll take turns of uh, uh, reading the paragraphs. You can read this, the first and second paragraph, and I'll read the third paragraph. But this is text three from... Um, the uh, most confidential knowledge Krishna is speaking to Arjuna because uh, Arjuna is Krishna's friend. And so he says, I'm going to entrust you with this most confidential knowledge. This is like the, the real secret, the supreme secret. So uh, text three is Ada Dana Purusha Dharma Syasya Parantapa Aprapya Mam Nivartante Mirtu Samsara Vartmani. Synonyms, ashadana na, those who are faithless, purusha, such persons, dharmasya, of this process of religion, asya, of it, parantapa, o killer of the enemies, aprapya, without obtaining mam, me, vartan, nivartante, come back, mrityu, death, samsara, material existence, vartmani, on the path of, translation, those who are not faithful in the path of devotional service cannot attain me, O conqueror of foes, but return to birth and death in this material world. You can read the first two paragraphs then. The faithless cannot accomplish this process of devotional service. That is the purport of this verse. Faith is created by association with devotees. Unfortunate people, even after hearing all the evidence of Vedic literature from great personalities, still have no faith in God. They are hesitant and cannot stay fixed in the devotional service of the Lord. Thus, faith is a most important factor for progress in Krishna consciousness. In the Chaitanya Charitamrita, it is said that one should have complete conviction that simply by serving the Supreme Lord, Sri Krishna, he can achieve all perfection. That is the real faith. In the Srimad Bhagavatam, 3, 4, 12, it is stated that by giving water to the root of the tree, its branches, twigs, and leaves become satisfied. And by supplying food to the stomach, all the senses of the body become satisfied. And similarly, by engaging in the transcendental service of the Supreme Lord, all the demigods and all the living entities automatically become satisfied. You read the second paragraph, too. Okay. After reading Bhagavad Gita, one should promptly come to the conclusion of Bhagavad Gita. One should give up all other engagements and adopt the service of the Supreme Lord Krishna, the, the personality of Godhead. If one is convinced of the philosophy of life, that is faith. Now the development of that faith is the process of Krishna consciousness. Faith means uh, the intrinsic belief in something sublime. There are three divisions of Krishna conscious men or women. Prabhupada always says men, men but it, you know, it, Krishna conscious is open to men and women. So uh, the third class are those who have no faith. If they're engaged in devotional service officially or some with some, for some ulterior purpose, they cannot achieve the highest perfectional stage. Most probably they will slip after some time. 
they may become engaged, but because they haven't complete conviction and faith, it's very difficult for them to continue in Krishna consciousness. We have practical experience in discharging our missionary activity that some people come and apply themselves to the Krishna consciousness with some hidden motive. And as soon as they are economically a little well situated, they give up this process and take to their old ways again. It is only by faith that one can advance in Krishna consciousness. As far as the development of faith is concerned, one who is well-versed in the literatures of devotional service and has attained the stage of firm faith is called a firm first-class person in Krishna consciousness. And the second class are those who are not very advanced in understanding of devotional scriptures, but who automatically have firm faith that Krishna bhakti or service to Krishna is the best course, and so in good faith have taken it up. Thus, they are superior to the third class who have neither perfect knowledge of the scriptures nor good faith, but by association and simplicity, they're trying to follow. The third class, the, the third class person in Krishna consciousness may fall down, but when one is in the second class or first class, he does not fall down. One in the first class will surely make progress and achieve the result at the end. As far as the third class person in Krishna consciousness is concerned, although he has faith in the conviction that devotional service to Krishna is very good, he has no knowledge of Krishna through the scriptures like Srimad Bhagavatam and Bhagavad Gita. Sometimes these third class persons in Krishna consciousness have some tendency toward karma yoga and jnana yoga. You know what karma yoga and jnana yoga is, right? Could you remind me? Karma yoga means work, working for Krishna or working for um, self-realization. And jnana yoga means like philosophical speculation of you know, thinking of who I am, you know, and what is a relationship. Um, it's not bhakti yoga's direct personal uh, realization of Krishna through surrender and service. Anyway, they have some tendency toward karma yoga and gani, but gani yoga, but sometimes they're disturbed. And as soon as the infection of karma yoga or gani yoga is vanquished, they become second class or first class persons in Krishna consciousness. See, it's vanquished when you have a tinge of bhakti yoga and then you to realize that bhakti yoga is actually the really direct path. I mean, these things all lead to Krishna, but it, unless you have bhakti yoga or direct some link, link to Krishna, then it, it's like taking the stairway instead of taking the elevator, you know? Faith in Krishna is also divided into three stages and is described in Srimad Bhagavatam. First class attachment, second class attachment, and third class attachment are also explained in Srimad Bhagavatam in the 11th canto. Those who have no faith, even after hearing about Krishna and the excellence of devotional service, who think of it as simply eulogy, find the path very difficult, even if they are supposedly engaged in devotional service. For them, there is very little hope in gaining perfection. Such faith is very important in the discharge of devotional service. How are you at reading Sanskrit? Not. I, <laughs> all right, I'll read the Sanskrit and then we'll take terms of the paragraphs. Text I'm four. Sorry, what was jnana yoga? I'm not sure I understood. Jnana yoga. Jnana yoga means like they're, they're mental speculators who speculate about who they are. And some of them may think that um, I want to become one with God. You know, I want to like merge into God's existence or into the impersonal Brahman effulgence or something like that. They think that God is like impersonal, but they have some perception that there is a truth in the self, but they don't really have a, a, a really uh, a, a solid understanding of who Krishna is because they're not yet surrendered to Krishna. They don't know. They're not, they don't have a spiritual master. So they haven't hear, heard yet from, from uh, an authority of who Krishna is, what he is, what he likes, what he doesn't like. You don't have under personal knowledge of Krishna. So and I'll just read the, is that, is that kind of like, okay. Text four, Maya, tata, maya tatami dam sarvam jagat abhyakta murtina matstani sarvabhutani nacham tva bhavastita. Synonyms, maya by me, tatam spread, idam, all these manifestations, sarvam, all, jagat, cosmic manifestation, abhyakta murtina, unmanifested form, matstani unto me, Sarva Bhutani, all living entities, na, not, cha, also, aham, I, teshu, in them, avastita, situated. Translation, by me and my unmanifested form, this entire universe is pervaded. All beings are in me, 
but I am not in them. Hey, are you still at the same place across from Settlers Ridge? Yeah. You know, they had a tornado warning in Wheeling. Oh, wow. Yeah, there's a tornado watch right now until you know, like 10 o'clock. So, but they actually, a tornado was sighted in near Wheeling. I hope all the devotees don't get blown away. Yeah. So you can read the first paragraph. My cat is here. Can you see her? Oh, she, she oh what's, what's his name or her? <laughs> she ran away. Her name's Coconut. She, <laughs> you know, every morning I, I listen to the uh, Bhakti Center class uh, at, in, in New York City. And they have Zoom and it's kind of interactive as well. And I sit right next to my Krishna, you know, that big blue Krishna that's right at the bottom of the staircase there. Yeah. And sometimes my cat, Sydney, he wants to get my attention. So I'm sitting there and I'm looking, the, the, the phone is pointing upwards, you know, and so I can see me and Krishna in the stairway. And, uh, and uh, you know, sometimes, you know, like Sydney doesn't feel like he's getting enough attention. So he'll tap me on the back of my <laughs> head go tap tap you know so he's my bhagavatam buddy you know <laughs> and everybody was smiling and laughing at that you know but uh i think he likes to uh he just wants attention basically you know he, he doesn't really care about the bhagavatam class but sometimes yeah. he'll jump up on the on the altar when we're offering food too because he's very I, jealous you know our other cat if that other cat sophie is getting attention he'll just like get really jealous and envious and he'll he'll like hey you're giving that attention and cat attention and not me i'm the one it's i'm the alpha male around here you know <laughs> he's kind of okay. he's kind of like that you know he's torturing our, our poor other cat and like chasing her up and down the stairs you know Aww. anyway what you know <laughs> it, it gives her good exercise though <laughs> before she was not getting much exercise but once he came in the house it was like now she's all, you know, I think it, it's like freaking her out a little bit. She's all Aww. frazzled. She's always looking out to where if she if he's like a little jealous, you know, she'll he'll just like come up and just pounce on her. You know, so anyway, it's kind of like amusing to watch, but uh, they're just playing. He is. He's not really jealous. He just wants attention, you know, but uh, go ahead and read the first paragraph here. The purport. Okay. The Supreme Personality of Godhead is not perceivable through the gross material senses. It is said that Lord Sri Krishna's name, fame, pastimes, etc. cannot be understood by material senses. Only to one who is engaged in pure devotional service under proper guidance is he revealed. In the Brahma Shamrita, it is stated... Pramanjana Charita. Thank you. Uh, one can see the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Govinda, always within himself and outside of himself if he has developed the transcendental loving attitude towards him. Thus, for people in general, he is not visible. Here it is said that although he is all-pervading, everywhere present, yet uh, he is yet not conceivable by the material senses. But actually, although we cannot see him, everything is resting in him. As we have discussed in the seventh chapter, the entire material cosmic manifestation is only a combination of his two different energies, the superior spiritual energy and the inferior material energy. Just as the sunshine is spread all over the universe, the energy of the Lord is spread all over creation and everything in, is resting in that energy. Yet, one should not conclude that ever, that because he's spread all over, he has lost his personal existence. To refute such argument, the Lord says, quote, I am everywhere and everything's in me, but still I'm aloof. For example, a king's head of government, which is a king's heads of gov a government, a king heads a government, which is but the manifestation of the king's energy. The different governmental departments are nothing but the energies of the king, and each department is resting on the king's power. But still, one cannot expect a king to be present in every department personally. That is a crude example. Similarly, all the manifestations that we see and everything that exists, both in this material world and the spiritual world, are resting in the, on the energy of the Supreme Personality of God. It. The creation takes place by the diffusion of his different energies, and as stated in the Bhagavad Gita, he is present everywhere by his personal representation, the diffusion of his different energies. I love this chapter. 
It's so awesome. Text five. Nachamat stani bhutani pas ya me yogam aishram bhuta brin nachabhutasto mama ma bhuta bhavana. Synonyms, na, never, cha, also, matstani, situated in me, bhutani, all creation, pasya, just see, mum, me, my, yogam, aishvaryam, inconceivable mystic power, bhuta, brit, maintaining all living entities, na, never, cha, also, bhuta, sta, in the cosmic creation, mama, my, atma, self, bhuta, bhavana, the source of all manifestations. Translation, and yet, everything that is created does not rest in me. Behold my mystic opulence, although I am the maintainer of all living entities, and although I am everywhere, still myself is the very source of creation. Go ahead. The Lord says that everything is resting on him. This should not be misunderstood. The Lord is not directly concerned with the maintenance and sustenance of this material manifestation. Sometimes we see a picture of Atlas holding the globe on his shoulders. He seems to be very tired holding his of this great earthly planet. Such an image should not be entertained in connection with Krishna's upholding this created universe. He says that although everything is resting on him, still he is aloof. The planetary systems are floating in space, and this space is the energy of the Supreme Lord. But he is different from space. He is differently situated. Therefore, the Lord says, although they are situated on my inconceivable energy, still as the Supreme Personality of Godhead, I am aloof from them. This is the inconceivable opulence of the Lord. Yeah, you know, that's called a chintya. Chintya means inconceivable. You can't understand it by your mind and senses. He says, I am everywhere, but I'm not in everywhere. I'm, you know, he's inconceivably simultaneously in and between every atom, and yet he's situated in his own abode, far, far away, far beyond this material manifestation. In the Vedic dictionary, it is said, quote, the Supreme Lord is performing inconceivably wonderful pastimes, displaying his energy. His person is full of different potent energies, and his determination is itself actual fact. In this way, the personalities of Godhead is to be understood, end quote. One may think we may think to do something, but there are so many impediments and sometimes it's not possible to do as we like. But when Krishna wants to do something, simply by his willing, everything is performed so perfectly that one cannot imagine how it's being done. The Lord explains this fact. Although he is the maintainer and sustainer of all the material manifestation, he does not touch this material manifestation. In other words, he's beyond the material modes of nature. He's transcendental to everything. Simply by his supreme will, everything is created, everything is sustained, and everything is maintained, and everything is annihilated. There is no difference between his mind and himself, as there is a difference between ourselves and our present material mind, because he is absolute spirit. Sim simultaneously, the Lord is present in everything, yet the common man cannot understand how he's also present personally. He is different from this material manifestation, yet everything is resting on him. This is explained here as Yogam Aishwaryam, the mystic power of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Yeah, there's a verse from one of the Upanishads. It's a really be beautiful, you know, like he sets the whole creation in motion and everything is going on automatically. He like makes a first, first push, like an, a freight train, you know, it, 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 drags all the other freight the cars behind it so he's like the first cause and then everything is created as, as an automatic in sequence you know just by his willing he doesn't even have to do anything he says i don't have anything to do you know but it's still everything is being done and just by his will you know it just reminds me of that uh one uh i'm just gonna throw in a joke here uh the the uh, what's his name ice cube there's a clip i saw with ice cube has got this friend that wants him to smoke some pot and he says you know he's trying to reason with him you know ice cube's like really grim he's got a frown on his face real serious you know but his friend says because it's friday you ain't got no job he ain't got shit to do <laughs> so you know it's like same thing with krishna he doesn't have anything to do he, he if but he's still doing things because if he didn't do everything uh he everything would be caught uh, everyone would imitate him and then the whole world would go to hell you know because you can't imitate the supreme controller 
you know, he doesn't do anything, but still everything gets done. But when he was here on this planet, he he had all these pastimes and he acted as a perfect householder in Dwarka and did all his householder duties and took care of his wife and kids, his wives. He had eight, 16,108 wives in 16,108 palaces and had different relationships with all of them at the same time at, because he's God and we're not. And we can't imitate that, you know, it's not possible, you know. Even the great mystics, they can divide themselves into like, I think up to eight times, but at each division of themselves, you know, that there's kind of like a hologram and they can only be a mirror image of the original. But Krishna, when Narada Muni went to visit him in, in Dwarka, he was doing different things with different wives and different children. Sometimes he'd, he'd be, you know, sleeping. Sometimes he'd be taking in, uh, you know, uh, he'd be playing with his children, other, other, other palace, he'd be like having dinner or whatever. And it, every single one, he'd be doing something different. So he can he can have millions of wives. It doesn't matter for Krishna because he's unlimited. But that blew Narada Muni's mind. And he's, you know, it's not easy for, for somebody to blow his mind because he knows everything too. You know, he's like the transcendental spaceman. He can go anywhere, anywhere, anytime in the blink of an eye, even anywhere in the material or spiritual creation. He just like flies around and plays his vena, you know, stringed instrument. Uh, so that's Narada Muni. Uh, okay, so uh, it's your turn, right? Yes. Go ahead and read the first paragraph. Actually, read the whole thing. Okay. Her, her part. I don't think you read the first part. Oh, I didn't? Okay. <laughs> okay, I'm getting old. I <laughs> think I, I, have, <laughs> I have onset dementia. I just start my mouth babbling, you know, and, that, and then I forget where I am. Yata kasha stito nityam vayo sarvatra gomahan tata sarveni bhutani matsta niti upadaraya. Synonyms. Yata, as much as akasha stita, situated in space, nityam always, vayu, wind, sarvatra ga, blowing everywhere, mahan, great. Tata, similarly, sarvani, everything, bhutani, created beings, matstani, situated in me. Iti thus upadaraya, try to understand. Translation, as the mighty wind blowing everywhere also rests in ethereal space, know that in the same manner all beings rest in me. That's what he says in, in the fourth chapter, actually. You know, it, it says, Krishna says, you know, how to learn the truth. He says, just try to understand the truth by approaching a spiritual master. Inquire from him submissively and render service unto him. Self-realized soul can impart knowledge unto you because he's seen the truth. And then the next verse says, when you thus learn the truth, you'll know that all living beings are but part of me. They're in me and they're mine. So in other words, every living being is resting in Krishna. They've come from Krishna. There are his separated parts and parcels. And at the end, they'll go back to him. And, uh, you know, but they're always parts and parcels of Krishna, but they're always individuals. They're not like merging into them or anything like that. Always individuals. Krishna's a person, everybody else is a person, so we can have a relationship with Krishna. Go ahead and read the full purport. Uh, as the mighty wind blowing everywhere always rests in ethereal space, know that in the same manner all beings rest in me. For the ordinary person is almost inconceivable how the huge material creation is resting in him, but the Lord is giving an example which may help us to understand. Space is the biggest manifestation we can conceive. The cosmic manifestation rests in space. Space permits the movement of even the atoms and up on the greatest and on up into the greatest planets, the sun and the moon. Although the sky or wind or air is great, still it is situated within space. Space is not beyond the sky. Similarly, all the wonderful cosmic manifestations are existing by the same supreme will of God and of them are subordinate to that supreme will. As we generally say, not a blade of grass moves without the will of the supreme personality of Godhead. Thus, everything is moving under his will. And by his will, everything is being created. Everything is being maintained and everything is being annihilated. Still, he is aloof from everything as space is always aloof from the activities of the atmosphere. 
in the Upanishads, it is stated, it is out of the fear of the Supreme Lord that the wind is blowing. In the Garga Upanishad, or, sorry, in the Garga Upanishad, it is stated, by the Supreme Order, under the superintendence of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the moon, the sun, and the great planets are moving. In the Brahma Samrita, it is also stated, there is also a description of the movement of the sun and it is said that the sun is considered to be one of the eyes of the Supreme Lord and that it has immense potency to diffuse heat and light. Still it is moving in its prescribed orbit by the order of the Supreme Will of Govinda. So from the Vedic literature, we can find that evidence, uh, find evidence that this material manifestation, which appears to us to be very wonderful and great, is under the complete control of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. This will be further explained in later verses of this chapter. Yeah, everything is, you know, going on, you know. I remember uh, one time I was, I, was I, I don't know where I saw it, but Bill O'Reilly used to be on Fox News, and he was saying, you know, the sun comes up, the sun comes down, the tide goes in, the tide comes out, never a contradiction. <laughs> and that was the one thing I agreed with Bill O'Reilly on. <laughs> Text seven. Sarvabhutani konteya prakritim yantimamikam kalpakshaye punastani kalpado vishrijamyaham. Sarvabhutani, all the created entities, konteya, O son of Kunti, prakritim, nature, yanti, enter, mamikam, unto me. Kalpakshaya at the end of the millennium, Puna again, Tani, all those. Kalpado in the beginning of the millennium. Vishrijami, I create, aham, I. Translation, O son of Kunti, at the end of the millennium, every material manifestation enters into my nature. And at the beginning of another millennium, by my potency, I again create. Go ahead. The creation, maintenance, and annihilation of this material cosmic manifestation is completely dependent on the supreme will of the personality of Godhead. At the end of the millennium means at the death of Brahma. Brahma lives for 100 years, and, on, and his one day is calculated at 4 million, is that billion? Uh, 4 billion? Or that thousand million, million, yeah, four billion. One that's one day of Brahma, and his night is the same. Four billion three hundred million years. Of our that's Brahma. one day, and he lives for a hundred years. Oh, wow. <laughs> so you know that he lives a long time. Uh, his night is of the same duration. His month consists of thirty such days and nights, and his year of twelve months. After one hundred such years when Brahma dies, the devastation or annihilation takes place. This means that the energy manifested by the Supreme Lord is again wound up in himself. Then again, there is need to manifest the cosmic world. So it is done by his will. Although I am one, I shall become many. This is the Vedic aphorism. He expands himself in his material energy and the whole cosmic manifestation again takes place. Yeah, this this a millennium in Vedic time scale is uh, one lifetime of Brahma. See, there's kind of like miniature creations and annihilations, not really the entire annihilation of the entire universe, and they happen every four billion three hundred million years, and which is a pretty pretty much approximately what the scientists say too. But at the end of uh, his lifetime of 100 years of Lord Brahma's life, which is 311 trillion years with a T, uh, everything, all the whole material world is, is annihilated and all the living entities merge into the body of this of Vishnu. And then they, they appear to be sleeping for a long time. And then he again creates after uh, that night uh, of the Supreme Lord. When Maha Vishnu is inhaling and exhaling millions of universes out of the pores of his body. And so that's just one quarter of the creation. That And Maha Vishnu is just like a portion of a portion of, of Krishna. But, uh, you know, Narada Muni, it's kind of interesting. In a previous millennium, 
Narada Muni took birth as a son of a maidservant, and he was serving some saintly persons who happened to be in, during the rainy season. His mother was taking care of him, and they were feeding them. She was feeding them, and he was like helping. And he wasn't educated. He didn't know anything about uh, spirituality or anything. And but anyway, he was helping them, or like washing his dishes, their dishes, and and listening to them. And he by permission, he asked if he could take some remnants of their food, which is prashadam, you know? And so then at, when he kept, he ate like that and he was like listening to them and he, the, the nature of the spiritual people, the, those saintly persons kind of attracted him. And he was listening more and more intently. And then in his next birth, he took birth as the son of Brahma in this millennium. That was like 300 trillion years ago, right? And so now he's Narada Muni. And so that's the effect of, of association with devotees. You can be Narada Muni in your next life, you know, going anywhere in the universe. There's actually some planets in the universe where people have that ability, like in Satyaloka and Brahmaloka. Brahmaloka is the highest planet, but Satyaloka, they, can, they have the ability to fly for wherever they want without even any airplanes. They can just manifest wherever they like, you know, go to the spiritual world, material world. And, uh, but a lot of them, they have like these like airplanes, you know, and they can with that without any kind of material means, they can just fly around everywhere into the heavenly planets, the planets of the demigods and just, you know, go wherever they want simply at will. Yeah. There's so many different, you know, they, they have, there's a whole show, I think in the history channel called the Vimanas. Vimanas are like spiritual airplanes, you know, like UFOs, but they exist, you know, and um, they, uh, there's a lot of stories about how these uh, flying transcendental planes can go, you know, anywhere. And they're used to like when Krishna or, or when Krishna manifests on earth, the demigods all come and they like check, check out his activities. Like when the Rasa dance was happening, the, the sky was crowded with all kinds of, you know, uh, demigod airplanes with their wives. And they were checking out Krishna and the Rasa dance and, they were just like enchanted by that, you know, because, but you know, demigods don't have any reason to come here. This place sucks now. So, you know, why would they come? We'll see here. What time is it? Okay. So we got a little bit of time left, uh, maybe five minutes. So we'll do another verse here. Unless you have any questions. Well, I do have a question. Yeah. Um, we've talked a little bit about Kali Yuga. Is that when, is that the end of Brahma's life? No, no. Uh, is that separate, Brahma's separate one day, one day of Brahma contains like a thousand Maha Yugas. And a, a Man Maha Yuga is a, a Satya Yuga, Treta Yuga, Dvarpa Yuga, and Kali Yuga. Satya Yuga is, lasts like 1.4 million years. And then they go in like half. And then the, the Yuga that we're in, Kali Yuga, that is like, it lasts for... It's going on. It's been going on for five thousand years, but it'll last another four hundred and twenty-seven thousand years, and that'll be people go down and down from from here. I mean, right now we're in Lord Chaitanya's kind of like mini golden age here, so we can take advantage of Lord Chaitanya's mercy through the holy name and and uh, chanting congregationally. But after that, after ten thousand years, it's expected that this Hare Krishna movement of Lord Chaitanya will exist. Here in this material world, but then after that, everyone becomes becomes more degraded. They lose all their pious uh, attributes, and they become lazy, misguided, unlucky, and people are quarreling and fighting. And there's all kinds of hypocrisy. And at the end of this age, people will be four feet tall, and they will eat their own children. Yeah. So that you don't want to stick around for that. You want to get out of here as, as soon as possible because it's not going to be. Don't easy. forget stupider because I see that all day and it's intriguing. It's in what you see what I I see just people getting stupider all day. Stupider, yeah, yeah. And 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 look, you know that just like in politics right now, there is there is no limit to the amount of stupidity. It can always get more stupid. You know, people will get more and more stupid. And that's just a given, you know? So, you know, it, what becomes the bottom is just like, you, know, you become like the subterranean hellish planets after that. You don't think they can go any lower. But actually Einstein said that. He said, two things are infinite. 
the universe and human stupidity. And I'm still not sure, quite sure about the universe. In other words, he was sure about human stupidity. <laughs> so, uh, you know, stupid is as stupid does, as, Frank, as uh, Forrest Gump says. True. L let me, uh, let's, let's just read this last one. How far is this? Okay. Um, I'll read the first paragraph and you read the middle paragraph. First paragraph of the purport, and I'll read the last paragraph, and then we can wrap it up. But there's only two of us, so we can go actually a little bit longer, but we started late. So text eight. Parker, oh, I just got a text from Benjamin. He said, ah, I missed it. I wasn't taking given track of time. See, if there was more than two people on this call, then it would only last 40 minutes, and they cut you off, because otherwise you have to pay for any more time, you know? So that's why we just keep it, try to keep it at 40 minutes. But if there's only two people, you can go in an unlimited amount of time. Yeah. But, uh, but my wife is making dinner right now. So, and then she's got to watch the hockey game because she's a hockey fan. Well, and but there uh, are other platforms that I can. You can do about. it for free, like Google or something. Um, yeah, yeah. There's, there's a bunch of free platforms. Really? Okay. Can you share like the one and on Zoom? I know this one, you know. Well, I, I just don't want to pay because I'm a cheap bastard. Yeah, there's live stream. There's Twitch. I feel like Twitch would like uh, get a bunch of young viewers, like random oh, yeah. people stumbling upon it. Yeah. <laughs> and then you were saying something about like what? TikTok. Uh, TikTok, yeah. Mm -hmm, yeah, I told you about TikTok. what Letterman said at the uh, Kennedy Center. He was like the MC of the Kennedy Center uh, awards. I think Joni Mitchell got an award and all these other, you know, really wow. great personalities. And he was saying, ah, yes, I'm Dave. Everybody know, you must know, you you may know, me, you probably know me from TikTok. <laughs> he was joking, of course. He doesn't know anything about TikTok. He's an old curmudgeon, just like I am. No, I think he's, he's on funny. TikTok. Robert Reich's on TikTok. I Robert think... Reich, the, the half yeah, economist. I his name wrong. Yeah, Reich. yeah, it's Reich. Yeah, I know him. Yeah, um, I call him the half economist, like a half man on Game of Thrones. Well, he is an he's economist. Very, very he, short. He has a oh, he's very short, and he has a class that he's been go, uh, doing. I've watched all six of them so far. I'll send you a link. It's really yeah, cool. yeah. He's a, he's a pretty smart guy. I mean, he knows everything about econ economics, and also that other dude. I don't know if he's on on that platform, but uh, oh, what's his name? Uh, the Nobel Prize winning economist um anyway i can't think of his name right now but i don't think about economics too much because it's all temporary anyway i kind of might just absorb myself in this kind of thing because you know this is the only thing that really matters you'd be poor in this life you might be rich in the next life uh, but it really doesn't matter because it's all temporary anyway and you can't take it with you so uh you know what everybody's getting what they deserve and desire and uh that's just the way it is uh, who knows why it's happening? Krishna knows, but he ain't telling. I'll just say, uh, I'll just read this one, the, the text and the translation, and you can read the first a paragraph, and I'll read the last paragraph. Prakritim swam avashtabhya vishrim jami puna puna bhuta gamami mam kritsnam avasam prakritir vasat. Prakritim, material nature, swam of my personal self, abhastabhya, to enter in, rishadrami, create puna puna again and again, bhutagramam, all these cosmic manifestations, imam this, kritsnam, total, avasam, automatically, prakriti, by the force of nature, vasat, under obligation. I don't know why this is a little... Little text is underneath. I, I haven't seen this, but I'll read it anyway. He lies within the causal ocean and breathes out innumerable universes. Into, into each universe, the Lord enters as Garbhadakshaya Vishnu. Each universe is in that way created. Translation, the whole cosmic order is under me. By my will, it is manifested again and again. And by my will, it is annihilated at the end. You can read the first paragraph. This matter is the manifestation of the inferior energy of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. This has already been explained several times. At the creation, the material energy is let loose as Mahatattva, into which the Lord, uh, as his first Purusha incarnation, Mahavishnu enters. He lies within the casual, uh, causal, causal. 
causal ocean and breathes out innumerable universes. And into each universe, the Lord again enters. Garbhadakshayu Vishnu. Each universe is in that way created. He is still, he still further manifests himself. As Shira Dakshai Vishnu. And Shira means milk. Shira oh. Dakshai. The, the ocean of milk. He, he rests on Ananta Shesh, which is a serpent bed, and Lakshmi is massaging his feet. You've probably seen uh, pictures of that. But he, uh, he lies in this ocean of milk. And then. Um, that go ahead. Vishnu enters into everything, even into the minute atom. This fact is explained here. The, uh, he enters into everything. Now, yes. as far as the living... Yeah, go ahead. You can uh, read the rest of it. As far as the living entities are concerned, they are impregnated into this material nature. And as a result of their past deeds, they take different positions. Thus, the activities of this material world begin. The activities of the different species of living beings are begun from the very moment of the creation. It is not that all is evolved. The different species of life are created immediately along with the universe. Men, animals, beasts, birds, everything is simultaneously created because whatever, de uh, whatever desires the living entity had at the last annihilation are again manifested. It is clearly stated here that the living entities have nothing to do with this process. The state of being in their past life and the past creation is simply manifested again. And all this is done simply by his will. This is the inconceivable potency of the Supreme Personality of God. And after creating different species of life, he, is, uh, he has no connection with them. The creation takes place to accommodate the inclinations of various living entities and so the Lord does not become involved in it. Yeah, he's he's aloof. He's he's not responsible for uh, living entities' actions and reactions to whatever desires they had in their previous life. He just creates the manifestation in order for them to uh, fulfill their desires. So if one becomes, you know, if one likes to eat meat, maybe he'll take birth as a tiger. Or if one wants to. You know, if one is very learned, may take birth as a brahmana. You know, but uh, the the uh, all these things, um, these different incarnations, the Garbhadakshaya Vishnu, first Mahavishnu, that's the um, the the entity that is a plenary portion of Krishna, and from his body, millions of universes are emanating from his the pores of his skin. And uh, when he exhales, all they, they all go out. And when he inhales, they all come back in again. And that takes 311 trillion years. But that's just a portion of a portion of Krishna. So you can imagine how powerful Krishna is, according to that. And so then he, he, he goes into each universe as the Garbhadakshay Vishnu. And uh, then each universe is created. And then he still further manifests himself. He, as Chiradakshay Vishnu lying in the ocean of milk. And he is the, Chiradakshay Vishnu is the Paramatma. He enters into everything and he's within everyone's heart. He knows what everybody's doing at all times. And he's within and between every atom and in everybody's soul. He knows everything about everyone, past, present, and future. But that's like a portion of a portion of a plenary portion of Krishna. So that in that way, you know, and he doesn't even, Krishna doesn't even have anything to do with this material world. Like it says, he's too busy enjoying with his friends and, and, and associates in the spiritual world. And uh, he knows what's going on, but he wants everybody in this material world to come back home where he is and have fun with him. So that's why um, he sends his representatives or his son or whatever, and, or he comes himself sometimes in order to show who, who what he looks like to ordinary men and he leaves his instructions so that we can all go back to him and, and live forever instead of being killed again and again and taking birth again and again because you know it kind of uh, it's a it's a the the cycle of birth and death krishna says later on in the gita that when you you one of the objects of knowledge is to know that these things are evil birth death disease and old age this is evil you don't 
you know, it's one of the bad things about the material world. Nobody wants to get old and die. Nobody wants to get diseased. And so these things are forced on us. But an intelligent person will ask, why are these things forced on me? Isn't there any other solution to this? And yeah, there is, you know, Prabhupada says, uh, he said this in 1972, um, that, you know, they, they might create some vaccine to, to cure some disease, but they can't cure disease and they can't stop death. So what is the use of their material of science if they can't solve these real problems of life, birth, death, old age, and disease? Uh, those are the real problems. So we have the solution, Krishna consciousness. We can solve these problems. No more birth, no more death, no more disease or old age. And uh, you can live forever in the spiritual world with, and be happy with Krishna forever. And uh, that's the goal of life. So, you know, we have the solution. So this is, this is like Prabhupada said, this is the greatest welfare activities for uh, for human beings is to engage in this process and teach everybody how to do uh, how to get on the train track back to Godhead, you know, because um, this this material this material world, he said, is no place for a gentleman or a gentle lady like yourself. So, you know, we have to get out of here. This really, really sucks. So, you know, that's the bottom line. But uh, it all happens by just surrendering and reading these books. And then our minds will be steady and we become, become attracted to these messages. And by chanting, especially with devotees, like we'll be doing tomorrow, um, we'll just be enlivened and uh, try to execute the mission of the spiritual master. And eventually, if we take a guru, you know, become initiated by a guru, then our linking process is really starting. And then we can actually... Uh, follow in the footsteps of all the great saints and sages that have appeared in the past. And, um, you know, once we're on that path, our, our progress is guaranteed. If we're, if we go, if we start to understand the, the scriptures, then we're coming to the second class platform. And when you're on the first class platform, you're able to explain all these things to somebody else very easily, you know, it becomes a second nature because everything is explained to us through the agency of the paramatma in our heart and it's confirmed from without by the spiritual master so you're free to act at that point because you know what is true and what's not you can distinguish between reality and illusion and you're not either bothered by anything there's no more botheration from our body or our mind those are the there are three types of miseries adiatmika which is means miseries from the body and mind there's there's adi Bodica, those are miseries created by other living entities, such as our boss or insects or, you know, parasites or whatever, uh, bed bugs. And then there's miseries caused by, oh, there's a kitty. And uh, the, <laughs> I like her tail. Is it a she? It looks like a little raccoon. Yeah, she's a, a Yeah, it's a raccoon. Our cat has a similar tail, like, kind of like a Cheshire cat. Um, his name yeah. is Sydney. Sidney Boo, we call him. Uh, he's also known as Bima because he has a voracious appetite. I call her Boo Boo. Oh, Boo Boo, yeah. Boo Boo, yeah, that's her nickname. <laughs> she's really cute. Um, My wife calls me Boo too because uh, that's Aww. short for Prabhu. But uh, uh, let's see. But that that's uh, that's about it. I mean, do you have any questions or comments or corrections? Um, I mean, it's really a lot. This is a pretty heavy. It's um, nice. This, this chapter is like the starting from, uh, from this point, the Krishna is really telling you like the essence of what it is, you know, that, uh, you know, he told Arjuna because you're my friend and because you're not envious of me, I'm going to disclose the supreme secret to you. And the secret is always think of me, become my devotee, worship me, offer obeisance to me. If you do that, surely you will come to me. And that's, that's what he promises because he told Arjuna, because you are my very dear friend. And so we're all, you know, we'll understand that Krishna is our friend. And not only that, we'll fall in love with Krishna. And that's the goal of life. You know, first of all, we, we have a relationship. We understand from chanting and through these books, we're hearing from Krishna and the guru we're understanding that Krishna is our friend because every single word in these books are for our good. And so they're obviously um, beneficial for our well being. And he understands what we want and what we need. And he can give us the right recipe or medicine for each particular circumstance that we're in. 
Uh, and uh, otherwise, it's too hard to figure out like what's going on. We're always like behind the veil of, of illusion and we don't know why we got here or where we're going. But if we ask these questions, we begin human life and Krishna can answer all these questions just like he did with Arjuna. Arjuna didn't know what he was fighting in, in this war. He wanted to go to the forest rather than kill his friends and relatives. And his, you know, his martial arts teacher and his grandfather were all on the other side. He was kind of attached to them. And he said, well, how am I going to enjoy this, this life if I kill these people that were my, worthy of my worship, you know? But Krishna didn't care. He said, no, you have to do your duty. And, uh, you know, he convinced him that his duty was, was more important than these temporary material relationships. And even if they were killed, you know, they would attain a, a higher destination. So their bodies might be killed, but their souls would actually get a better destination. So, and if he, if he won the war and conquered them, then he would have a kingdom. Otherwise he would have to live by begging, you know, cause Chatriyas, that's how they would live if they weren't, you know, employed in a, in a kingdom back then, you know, kind of like a game of Thrones situation, you know, game of Thrones. Yeah. I mean, if, unless you're living under a rock last 10 years, probably know what that is. My wife is completely addicted to that. Yeah, it took sure. me a second.